coming online, which is great, and more will join us over the coming hour. Um, okay. So welcome, everybody. We are here to talk all about angel financing. Now, those of you who have not been on the uh, creative finance course yet, why not? What, 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 what are you doing? Um, it is the best course, isn't it, Lindsay? Definitely. It is. Yeah. It is head and shoulders better than any other course, whether it's digitally digital or live. Which we did our first one a few weeks ago, didn't we? Two, three weeks ago, yeah, which went really, really well. Yeah, we, very, mean, very, very good feedback. Hmm. Very good feedback. Very good feedback. Yeah. And how many creative finance courses have we done now? Have you done now, you and Mark? You and Mark Dalton. Um, we've done around about 120, roughly 129, roughly. Um, so that's, that, that, is, that is up to thousands and thousands of people, which is fantastic. Um, started in 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, well, on, that, on that online version that was on three or four weeks ago, there was 165 logins. Wow. And which means if, let's say, conservatively, 60% of those were partners, that's another, well, that's well over 200. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe even 300 watching that day, that, that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, what I was going to say was, if you've not been on Creative Finance, you will you will not have seen the the fantastic section that Lindsay does all on uh, uh, angel financing, and that's what we're bringing to uh, the group this evening. Um, so what I'm going to encourage everyone watching to do is is comment. Um, well, not comment. Ask questions. Ask questions. In, yep, in the live version in the classroom, Lindsay, you make it very, very interactive, this whole section, don't you? Yes, I do, yeah. 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 Um, so we want to see plenty of questions coming through. Um, I'll try and get them all in. However, if I don't, apologies in advance, but yeah. please do um, put questions in the box there. Um, hold questions for now, obviously, because he uh, hasn't said anything confusing yet. <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, I have... Going? Okay, I've been I've been working on a concept, a, a whole program to do with angel mastery. To be honest with you, um, and I've broken it down into, gosh, quite a few sections. The main sections would be preparation, the hunting, and finding angels, the documentation bit, the ongoing management. You've got a little bit about personality <laughs> styles uh, in there somewhere. You've got the types of angeling. Um, some of you will be familiar with this, some of you won't, but you've got what I call scalping, angeling, money in, money out. You've got money in, most money out. Uh, you've got long-term angels. And you've also got a, an area of confusion, which is JVs, angels, angels, JVs, what's the difference? Uh, when should I use what? Um, so tonight, what I'm going to do is run through the hunting bit, um, the preparation bit. You, it's touched upon on the basic the, th the first three days you attend and i think you will meet people in your journey who've got what we call private finance documents um so and that really on the creative finance course takes a good 45 minutes to cover so let's assume that you have a document whether it's what we call the short version or the long version and you're then out hunting um now <sighs> In the past, I've shared the fact that this methodology I'm going to go through does work. The way I validate it um, in the creative finance courses that, that Mark and I run um, is we pick off people who've worked with Mark and myself on a coaching basis for the last year. And so the method I'm going to use has a certain amount of validity in as much as looking at 2019, this process is has raised around about 5.9 million last year um, across people we were coaching. So it does work. It's probably not the only method. Um, I've heard a fantastic system being used with LinkedIn at the moment. Social media has its place without question for angel hunting, <laughs> but this is a, a sure fired method. So I'm going to go through it and I've broken it down into, believe it or not, 20 chunks, but I'm, I'm welcoming your question, so if we stop at around about number five, Simon, or whatever, okay. and begin to open it up to questions, <clears throat> that's fine. Um, if the questions slow down, the, the, the going from 
part one to part 20, I'll sort of just roller coaster it forward and we'll just sweep up some questions at the end. So let's just see how it goes. So yeah, it's a walk mean, around angel hunting. What you've just said. Yeah. This first section, just to clarify, is going to cover how you find them and where you get your first one. Yes. Hunting. Yeah. Hunting. Hunting for them. Okay. Brilliant. Because that, that so was the first not... two or three questions that came in. How do you find okay. them? Where do you get them? So go ahead. So it's, it's, it is not the documentation preparation. Okay. Okay. Uh, and if and one of the questions that somebody's going to um, offer up this evening is going to be, what comes first, the deal or the angel? In my belief, in what we see, it's the deal first, or the type of deal you're going to do. Okay. So, the methodology goes along the lines like this: we first start by listing ten people you like, know, and trust. And what I normally say and always say is, if you do list the 10 people you like, know, and trust, what you're automatically doing is writing down people who are rich. But that's not the instruction. <laughs> the instruction is 10 people who you like, know, and trust. So they're in your inner circle. Yeah, they are close to you. You know them, they know you. Uh, but not necessarily the ones with checkbooks. You can do another step, which I encourage a lot of people to do, which is to put those people into an order, if you like, of positivity, because some of the people you like, know, and trust are potentially a little bit anti about what you're up to, uh, and some of them are very positive or inquisitive. Just list them. It doesn't matter what order but on a scale of one to 10, how positive or negative they are. And I would suggest perhaps your practicing ground are the people who are the, the, the least positive, just to give you a bit of practice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take that. Um, I think you may as well get some bumps and bruises to start off with. Okay. Um, you can vary it. You can go, <laughs> you can go positive, negative. You can choose whatever order, but I think, um, if we're going to finesse your skills and angel hunting is in my view, not a gift from God. It's a skill. It's a skill. It's a methodology. And actually, to be honest with you, I think it's a sales track. So for those people who go, oh, not sales, um, it is selling because you're selling yourself and you're selling the concept of getting involved with property. Uh, and there, there is a question I know from Facebook about where property fits in the, in their investment uh, pie chart, and I'll cover that later on. But um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're brushing our skills. So why not practice with somebody who's going to give you a bit of a hard time? Um, the first thing we do, and, and this, this, the nice thing about angel hunting is it doesn't have to be naff sales, hard sales. It can be, it can be gentle, it can be civilized, and it can be polite. So the first thing we do with all 10, and we're, we're doing this, we're doing this all at the same time. So we're asking 10 people on the same day. Um, it can be by uh, face, Facebook messaging. It could be by WhatsApp. It could be by, um, email. It could be on the phone. But uh, essentially, you're saying something along the lines of, look, you know, I've been doing this property stuff. I or we are really, really excited. We put together a sort of business plan or a proposal and we want to send them to you for some feedback. That's it. So you're gaining permission from 10 people who are very relatively close to you to, for them to give you some feedback at the same time that you do this, by the way, what I'm going through is relatively methodical. So there are some very clear steps here. Um, so, Step number four is, as well as asking permission, you arrange a time for a meeting to get the feedback. Let me repeat that. So it's asking permission and getting a feedback meeting. Yeah. Now, the key with the feedback meeting is don't ask for an hour. Don't ask for 30 minutes. Ask for 10 or 15 minutes. The reality is it's going to go on. It's going to go on probably for 30 minutes, 40 minutes or whatever. But if you ask a busy person for an hour, 
they're going to back off. If you ask a busy person for 10 or 15 minutes, they generally speaking, if they like, know and trust you, will say yes. Um, and if you see some sort of reaction, if it's if it's a video call and somebody says, mm, review the document, just say, by the way, just flick through it. Flick through it. Give me a general yeah. consensus. <clears throat> um, if feedback is the sort of language that you're not used to using, it's a bit heavy and doesn't suit your world, just say things like, look, I'm just checking that it flows correctly, it makes sense, it hangs together, um, uh, just, just it feels okay, it looks all right, that sort of thing. So make it relatively low-key. I mean, it is a serious conversation when you get the feedback, but, uh, but, but tee it up nicely. Don't make it mega heavy. <laughs> um, so mega heavy. Is that the time for the axe? No. Um, so, so that first process, and, and I've had people that I've coached in the past say, hmm, I've had no success with asking my 10 people. M my response to that is, hang on a minute. So 10 people that you like, know, and trust. In fact, I'd go as far as to say love, like, know, and trust. have said, no, I'm sorry. You've asked the wrong questions. You've, you've, you've teed it up too heavily or, mm. or you you must have said something wrong or you've got the wrong list <laughs> so and by the way this is national this is this could be in the uk or outside the uk for this in this context okay um next step is um we actually have the meeting <clears throat> and as you would do as a busy person you would confirm the meeting and say look Really appreciate your time. Really appreciate uh, the, the fact that you've read through it and just confirming tomorrow. That's sort of hinging the fact that even though it's a low key chat, that you you're confirming the time. You're reminding somebody because people have busy lives and they and they they'll forget. And you've got this campaign list of ten people, and you're hunting for twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand pounds or. What's the highest one I showed on the sheet last uh, three weeks ago? I think it was eight hundred and fifty thousand fundraise. So you know that that's your range of angel hunting that's that's possible. Um, it's relatively important for you, so therefore make sure you're not disappointed with the fact that you've got ten angel feedback sessions next Tuesday, and none of them. Oh, sorry, missed it. Sorry, forgot. So, um, so you've you've confirmed the meeting, right? Okay. Um, Step six. Are, are we, are we? Do we have any questions that are relevant so far, Simon? Not no. relevant to this preceding yeah. few minutes. No. Okay. Just looking so, through there. So, with the feedback, be prepared to uh, take it seriously. Um, be thanking those people all the way through the feedback. I would suggest you be you're taking notes. Um, this is not a. This is a famous phrase in in property and negotiation. Don't don't get involved with an argument. Don't win the argument and lose the sale. So just say, yeah, no, okay, good point, good point, good point. Um, because actually, this is your potential general public that you put a document together for. So this is really, really quite important. If there are some, be um, gracious, be gracious, be, and be thankful. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now, you will have, um, and I'm not going to go into a great dialogue. I, I do, obviously, I've covered this, obviously, in my first book ever published, Step Up and Focus, um, Personality Style. Mm -hmm. Step Up and Focus is my first ever book published. But um, um, I cover the personality styles. But be aware that you'll have some people who are quite analytical, some people who are very, very gentle and caring, um, what we call dolphins, some people who will just go, yeah, yeah, it looks great. And, um, in which case, sometimes the, the gentle and the and the, the hail fellow well met characters, what we call the dolphins, the monkeys, may just go, yeah, yeah, it looks great. Push them a little bit to get some feedback. You'll get the lions who are ba basically are very direct, with, which is very much uh, how much of what by when. Uh, so the feedback will be crisp, blunt, and to the point. Accept it. You'll know these characters, even if you don't. If you're not familiar with the personality styles, you, you'll know the sort of response you're going to expect from these people because you know, like, know, and trust them. So, with with the with the analytical, with the owl person, uh, 
they will probably rip it to shreds. <laughs> That's okay. Don't cry. Just say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Once I've adjusted it, can I come back to you? Okay. We now get to crunch time, which is we, we say what may be in your heads and their heads anyway, which is we give them permission to not have any money. And we give them permission to um, not, not even be confronted or embarrassed about the fact that you, well, you want to let them know you're not asking for money. So there are many ways, to, and then you can say whatever you want in terms of how it suits you. But my suggestion is you say something along the lines of, look, obviously it's not your cup of tea, but I bet you know two or three people where it's right up their street. Now, um, uh, what that does is it's saying, look, don't worry if you haven't got any pennies. Don't worry if your risk profile is not linked to property. It's okay, but I, I want some further help from you. So the script would be along the lines of, look, I appreciate this may not be your cup of tea, but I do want some help from you, if that's okay. So as I say, I've, I've, I've tried this evening to break this down into minutize because quite a few people fall between beneath the cracks say this system doesn't work and it does i promise you incredible results we get um so the next step would be we're, we're, we're trying to lift the lid off the brain of the 10 people you like know and trust who are going to help you mm -hmm. so we've we've, accept, we've thanked for the we've thanked for the feedback and now we are going for help so thank you so much for that feedback. That is so valuable. Thank you. That's We're going to improve it where you said and whatever. I just want to see if, obviously, it's not your cup of tea, um, but I just want to see if uh, you're in a position to help me a bit further. Possibly a bit of pause for silence. Help. Humans like helping. We've just been through 65, 70 days where the whole country has come out and been helping everybody. So we know human nature, we like helping people. So the word help is key. Um, and what I would use there is possibly two things. I pre-frame the sort of returns that people are not getting from the bank right now. How do you do that? My favorite method is do a screenshot of moneysupermarket.com, moneysupermarket.com, and demonstrate actually in reality maybe maybe taking a screenshot and then saying right okay so somebody who's who's earning who's got fifty thousand quid in the bank is earning and actually get a calculator out and work it out with them i call it janet and johnning so what we're doing there is we're actually demonstrating that 0.5 percent uh, i wish um is actually not a lot and perhaps looking at eight percent or six percent and literally on a piece of paper visually going through exactly how good a return your secured private loan is and the returns that the angels can get. Uh, so you're teeing up and you're pre-framing ready to get this help. Um, so Lindsay, what we're looking just, for... Um, yeah. Just because I think it is yep. relevant in this early stages. Um, yep. Ben's asked, should we only speak to one potential angel at a time? And if a few people ask to tell them together, what could we say to make only a one-to-one -one meeting? Okay. Uh, that's a you, very good question. You, you put that's your 10, you, you put your, your details out to 10 people you like, know, and trust. Yeah. Do, you, do you cherry pick or do you speak to them all if they all want more info? Or Personally, and based on the experience of the thousands of people that Mark and I have coached over the years in terms of angel hunting, that's a, that's a very good question because the temptation is get them all in a room and do a group presentation uh -huh, and yeah. whoosh and do a Michael Jackson moment. And the whole, <laughs> the whole crowd, the whole room stands up, applauds you and offers you checks for a million quid. The, the danger there is if there's one naysayer in that group who possibly could or could, may or may not be right or wrong, but ask you a question you can't answer, they yeah. will kill the room. And when mm -hmm. I say room, it could be lounge, it could be, you know, it could be your living room. But so I would, 
I would, I was going to say, pick them off. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would communicate with them on a one-to-one -one basis or a one-to-two one -to -one. if it's a couple. So coming um, back to the earlier part of the question, should you only? Um, uh, no, actually, I think I, I misunderstood the first part. But yeah, basically, we're saying speak to one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless you, and I would say until you feel very, very, very confident in your message and probably have four or five angels behind you, in which case you can say what we normally do, blah, 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 blah. But I, um, I've come across two or three people who've tried it at, mm -hmm. in the early days and had tears. I've seen two or three people who tried it once they're established and it does work. It does work as a group. So one to one to start off with. So back to the sort of the, the, the minutiae of the track, we've, um, we've, we've chosen 10 people we like, know, and trust. We've asked permission to send out some stuff. We've, uh, we've, we've clarified what we want, which is feedback thoughts. We've confirmed the meeting. We're sitting down. By the way, we're probably, I always say do things face to face. Of course, right now, today, it's a Zoom call. It's a WhatsApp call. Um, basically your you, you my recommendation is it's not a whatsapp dialogue i think the potential helper and the potential angels want to see the whites of your eyes and it's a face-to-face -face meeting and this is right now in this environment until lockdown is completely eased this is the best we can do and people are, are completely familiar over the last six seven weeks this is one of our modes of communication now so whereas before we say must be face to face now it's called okay video calls are fine mm. because you can read you can pick up signs from people yeah. um so we're saying this is probably not your cup of tea uh but i bet you know two or three people where this is right up their street because mm -hmm. now you can be as blunt as you want and this is obviously uh hosted on facebook so there is no swearing allowed i get that but um miss, mr and mrs so and so imagine the damned unpleasant and rubbish returns the banks are giving you could even emphasize that people are, are angry with the returns the banks are giving so we're looking to distill from those people who've given you feedback an introduction to more people we're looking to break into their world and they're two or three people that you don't know but that they know we, are we okay with that yeah okay so a, a clarification there, though, there's a thought come through here from Amy that if you're saying, do you know anyone who would perhaps like to get involved or that, that or I bet you know somebody who's got some money, does that not give the impression that they, that, that let's say if I was putting that to you, do you know anyone who might want to be involved with this? Does it not give you the impression that I think you've got no money? Um, perhaps come across as insulting or? No, no, I think you've. I th uh, Amy, I think that's a good question, but you preempted that, by the way. If you, if you remember, you're saying, look, it may not be your cup of tea. And there is a, you, you leave a pause. Um, and it could well be that those people have jumped in and said, oh, gosh, okay, well, I'm interested. In which case, you can, I hope, honestly say, okay, well, to be honest with you, that's great, fantastic. Let's, let's keep talking. Um, my intention was actually simply to get feedback from you. And if that is your intention, then you're telling the truth. The fact that they suddenly want to get involved, great. And notice that word, I don't know whether you just embedded it there, Simon, but the word involved, not invest, is our favorite, one of our favorite mantras for angeling. So I may as well just emphasize that right now. Despite what Mark thinks, I have been listening for the last Good. Uh, three odd courses. Three odd <laughs> if you, if you, if you, focus on two words would you like to invest uh or would you like to get involved they're two completely different they create two completely different biochemical results in somebody's brain invest is a shall i shan't i should i shouldn't i should i know about investing and and, and it, it it creates all sorts of question marks in somebody's brain mm -hmm. involved is collaborative Simon, do you want to get involved? Get involved. Come on, get involved. Get involved. Get involved. It's 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 a joining. It's friendly. It's it's it, as I say, collaborative. So, um, if 
if there were, gosh, there are many golden rules to angel hunting, but w one of the rules is embed the word involved, not invest as regularly as you can. The other one, which uh, we talk about ad nauseum, is total and complete enthusiasm. Some people feel that they have to learn their private finance document or angel document off by heart. Don't bother. Enthusiasm will beat anything. Mm -hmm. ten, ten days, ten days of the week. You can't have ten days of the week. I, I'm going to rattle forward, and we'll, then we'll collect some more questions. Um, what you might want to do is choose uh, some examples of the type of people who get involved with property investment. Um, sometimes I share the Creative Finance course uh, a list of what I call uh, ten uh, angel teaser questions. I'll give you some examples. Uh, people who are downsizing and have some cash went with the cash to the bank and suddenly realized the returns and they were downsizing because they wanted some cash and suddenly the investment returns or the deposit returns are awful. You've got people who've possibly sold some businesses, possibly, possibly doing well in business, uh, possibly somebody who is um, uh, uh, in, in IT who, who, who generally speaking collects far too much to pay tax and has some surplus at the end of the year, those sorts of people. So my suggestion is to open the mind of those 10 people you're speaking to individually, um, have some examples of the type of people who commonly or normally, commonly or normally invest in property and become angels. You see, subtly what we're doing here is we're turning in sales terms, 10 prospects into 30. So, um, and we're at that juxtaposition where you framed it, you've explained that it may not be their cup of tea, you're, you've demonstrated what they're not getting in the banks. And by the way, this, this, is a, this could be a, this is a two minute dialogue, if, if that, you're teeing it up and you're saying, right, so basically the help I need is to pick your brains for two or three people where it might be right up their street. That's my favorite script there. Um, <laughs> So, in terms of just, my blackbirds attacking me, um, <laughs> fair play, um, turf or blackbirds. That's what, that's why I needed the axe, Simon. Yeah. For, for my blackbirds, mind you, I'm not. No, I'm not into killing blackbirds. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting for a football from next door to come over. Yeah, hit you on the bonds. Well, they have a trampoline, so we might see them bouncing up and down. But I think uh, no, I think I think they're on music night tonight. Anyway, um, back to angels. We so, <laughs> what we're trying to do is we're trying to distill the names of two or three people who may well be where it may well be right up their street. Okay, I think this is one of the key points where people um, miss miss this journey because. What we're trying to do is make the people who are helping you, they're giving you feedback and they're now helping you. You've opened their brains. You've, you've, you've looked at one or two, you've, you've teased out people where it may be right up their street. They've got one or two people in their brain. Now the thing to do is to bring them into the room. Let me explain that briefly. So we have distilled, nice word, the, the names of three people. Let me just write some names down just to, uh, just to role play John. Brian and Samantha and Samantha with John Brian and Samantha what we want to do is we want to bring them into the room um, let me just I've just lost the screen there there we go okay that was clever um, let me just repeat that what we want to do with the three people John Brian and Samantha who where it may well be right up their street we want to bring them into the room let me explain what that means we use the words tell me about as if you're finding out about how you met John, how long you've known John, where does John live, how often do you see John, what's John like, what does he do, why do you think John might be appropriate? And so have four, five, six quiz questions, not too intrusive about John, because what you're doing is with, with the person who's, who you already like, know and trust, you're bringing those people into the room. The more they talk about John, the more they'll be comfortable to introduce you. So, I would, yeah, I would call that section, bring them into the room. <clears throat> We've now got John teared up to be introduced by you. Um, 
now we we've got to be directive and guide them and we say right what normally works is this and a great thing that's working right now is you bring john into a zoom call and introduce him this so it's a three-way zoom call and then your role is to back off so simon you've introduced john uh you you bring john and the thing to do also is to 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 quiz and i would be saying to simon what would you say about john I'll see what Simon says. And generally speaking, the thing to watch for is we don't want Simon, who's introducing John, to do my PR for me or to want, for want of a better word, to do my sales job for me. That's my job. Therefore, all Simon's going to say is something like, look, Lindsay's involved in property. Um, we had a chat. He's he's doing something really quite exciting. Give him 10 minutes of your time. I'm going to bring him to a meeting. I'm going to, I'm going to be at a meeting with you. Clearly, if it was lockdown easing, it would be over a coffee or a beer or a gin and tonic or whatever. So make sure you th – those points about bring, bring the person into the room, tell them what normally works in terms of what to say. So you're being pretty directive here, but you're coaching those people so that they're not forced in, into an uncomfortable position. Does that make sense? You're are there any straightforward and, and upfront with them? You are, but but it's quite it's pretty polite and it's non intrusive, but mm. it's pretty firm hand holding to help Simon bring John to a meeting so that I can explain about the property bit. So I'm not putting Simon into an awkward situation where Simon's got to explain about angeling and returns and so on and so forth. So ultimately, the message there is control the introduction. Next point in terms of the minutiae, if you are introduced to John blind, so Simon says, no, 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 just just speak to um, speak to John. He's happy. Um, make sure uh, you've got to make sure you give Simon the feedback. If the meeting went well, great. If it didn't go well, great. If, if John wasn't interested, doesn't matter. Simon needs to know because Simon has been polite enough to help you create if you like a, an increase in your angel prospect pool from 10 to 30 and that's what we're trying to do here suddenly we're we're increasing our our network we're bouncing into other people's networks um i've already mentioned the, the words involvement um and <laughs> sometimes when i'm presenting this and sharing this live i i, I sort of come out with the term step away from the vehicle the person, a potential angel is buying you, don't expect the private finance document to do the job for you. Um, the the, the person, anything? yeah, the, 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 the phrase I use quite a lot, quite often as, as one, of our, one of our golden rules for angel hunting is, I say, step away from the vehicle. What I mean by that is, don't rely on the private finance document to do your sale. It's you your eyes, your smile, your integrity, the fact you've turned up on time, the fact that you're making the person comfortable. Uh, it's you who's going to sell the angel investment because the people ultimately are going to quite like the idea of property, but they're looking at you and judging you. So it's not all the small print. It's not the logo. It's not the brand. It's not the name of the, uh, the company. It's you. That's why the visual and the, the Zoom meeting or the WhatsApp video or whatever, the face-to-face -face meetings are absolutely key. Um, and I've already said it. Um, my final bit before I get a flurry of questions, I hope, yeah, you have. is, is um, the words involved. <clears throat> Involvement and enthusiasm will, will bring you, in some cases, millions and millions of pounds of angel investment. That's my little 20 step broken down process for hunting. Uh, Simon, you, you said I should come spend about 20 minutes on that. I have done. Um, got some other types of angels here, the flappy ones. Yes, we've got, we've got oh, yeah. the angel Akasha here, but um, what we're looking for are checkbook angels in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's quite methodical. It's quite formulaic. There's quite a lot in there. Um, what would I do to, to help support that? I would understand the personality styles. I would look at 
um, what makes people tick. So um, um, on personality styles, and for um, for anyone who doesn't hasn't really come across anything like that, what's there was a question here. What sort of books would you recommend? What who who would you be reading, I've got, watching? I've got two books. Two books to recommend. Um, one is by a chap called Nigel Risner, R I S N E R, and his book. R I S N E R, yeah. And his book is, uh, it's called It's a Zoo Around Here. And he goes through the four personality styles that I favor. Um, uh, we call them, um, a lot of you will have come across corporate, uh, corporate uh, personality styles. Uh, so I'll cover that briefly, the Myers-Briggs and so on and so forth. You've got the reds, blues, and greens and yellows and whatever. Um, Nigel talks about animals far far easier in my view to understand mm -hmm. so you've got the the dolphin you've got the the, the relator the socializer the dolphin related the social um, monkey you've got the lion who, which is the assertive the 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 director and you've got the analytical which is now please i don't expect you to remember all that now you can reference that you can have a look um the other brilliant book is um it's it's covered comprehensively in a chapter it's called step up and focus by lindsay hopkins Step up uh, and, and focus by Lindsay Hopkins. I think Hopkins. I've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my <laughs> first book of many I've written so far. Three published, um, but it's a whistle stop tour of because the key there is talk to people in the appropriate language to them. You're not manipulating them; you're honouring them. Um, so, if, if, for example, a lion, a lion wants to know how much or what by when. It's a relatively brief meeting. And they'll make a decision based on that. Um, an analytical, an owl, will want detail. Give them detail. Mm -hmm. uh, a dolphin will want stuff like, are you involved in charity? Are you a family person? And, and, and. A monkey will be, right, okay, are we going to have our quarterly angel review meetings in a pub? Are we going to have a bit of a laugh? Are you, can I have a site meeting? Can I come and have a look at the property? That'll be a laugh. Stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. But, uh so it, uh, i guess this is really for in in the meeting that you have it's 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 um george has suggested that it's it's important that you know what they want and, and to give it to them um initially if yes but ultimately initially the first meeting and it may be i would think it's probably going to be one of two or three meetings with a potential angel uh, where I was getting to this evening is breaking out from your initial circle where you think you don't know anybody with money mm -hmm. to breaking out into a bigger circle. So going from 10 people that you like, know, and trust who have no money to a, a wider pond of, of potentially 20, 30 people. Um, you can in, 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 in formula Excel terms, you may spend that first meeting with the potential new angel quite simply rapport building mm. finding them finding about you you finding out about them in terms of a classic sales track you may well do that um so don't necessarily go for the jugular straight away it, de it depends on what, what sort of a rush you're in um so yeah f fair comment but you um if, if it's a one-off meeting where you're going to impress then the impression the, the, the impressingness is your enthusiasm your genuineness you're not trying to bore them to tears by flicking through every page like a yeah. like a sales pitch it's a chat it's a conversation so what if then in that conversation they get really really interested um and then they sort of cool down and they avoid contact or you know to use the young people's vernacular they ghost you <laughs> what should you uh, what could you do there could, should you pursue it or should you just go oh well so what move on next um, I think it is a, a case of so what m move on yeah so what move on next but the only thing I would suggest if you're ghosted is to double check from the original ten because one of them will have introduced you whether you've caused offence or upset or whatever just to double check yeah. to secure the ten people that you like know and trust so go back but if to you're the ghosted, introducer is what you're saying yeah go back to the introducer but if if you are ghosted. Um, it it goes we do not want to be naff 
we do not want to be too salesy. We do not want to be too aggressive. That would give you a bad reputation. It would get you, yeah, you don't want that. That's not what angel hunting is all about. So I'm going to say this, um, believe it or not, once you get moving, you will have people asking to invest with you and you make the decisions. But some people right now listening to this will think, oh my goodness, I wish. Um, so the, your personal PR of being polite, structured, professional is absolutely key, key at the outset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if they, if, they, if they run away, I'm afraid you have to let them run away. Yeah, fair enough. So coming back to, to the people that you like, know and trust, um, Claudia, she says, um, besides people that you, that you do know and trust, would you speak to people at business networking events um, when you're out and about? Um, um, and would you show them your angel document, the full, the, the finance document? We, we, we talk about this in the creative finance course. The answer is yes. Um, but of course, what you would do is in, in, in a business network context, you'd probably, um, my experience of networking, you would meet that person. You'd say, look, we've obviously got some stuff in common. I'd love you to have a look at this and then arrange a coffee meeting. So you wouldn't you never pitch in that network meeting. The mm -hmm. purpose of network meetings is to meet somebody to then have a one-to-one -one meeting. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, one of our credos is have your private finance document or what we call the Precy one sheet, two sheet um, mm -hmm. with you at all times. Like, get and it out there. And the one sheet, that's that's a, a, a condensed version of, of the full private finance document, right? Yeah. The one sheet is normally a Precy of a deal that's hot, for, hot to trot that you're working on right now. Okay. Um, and we suggest that you have it everywhere. <laughs> it, it falls out of your handbag. It falls out of your rucksack. It falls out of your kit bag. Um, and um, yeah, there's, there are some games we play with that. So um, talking about interest rates um, that you might offer, does that yeah. come up in the first meeting? And if so, what sort of how in depth do you get into it? What sort of rates would you initially offer? Yeah, okay, um, good question. Good question. It may do. Uh, and what seems to be the norm at the moment is between six and eight percent. That seems to be the angel standard. One or two of you may well be thinking, hang on a minute, if I offer much higher, I'll mm -hmm. get lots of yeses. The answer is no, you won't. Mm -hmm. um, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And that's what a lot of people are taught. And therefore, anything bumping above 10 will actually probably scare people off because it probably it sounds too good relative to if you think about the interest rates that the banks are giving right now. Yeah. Um, if I ramble on a, a, uh, to a certain extent, Simon, because I know somebody said, look, how can I compete with the stock market returns? Um, the answer is you can't depending on whether the market's up or down. Um, the, way that I the way that I look at that is, if you imagine a pie chart, probably three quarters of it, for somebody who's an active investor, they can get between 6 and 20% return on stocks and shares, options, hedge funds, pigs' bladders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where we live is the 25% real estate box, the 25% real estate segment, which is a six to an 8% secured loan, secured against an asset. So we can't compete, uh, but that's where we fit. So yeah, Mr. City Dude, I'm sure you can get 56,000% on the stock market, and I'm sure you've enjoyed the roller coaster over the last 12 months, but where we sit is <clears throat> safe, secure, quadrant 25 percent real estate quadrant that's where we fit so don't try and compete with stocks and shares mm. it's a different part of your portfolio okay um, so uh, you've asked for funding or you've asked for i suppose um do you know anyone who wants to get involved do, is is this similar to um do you keep talking or do, or do you <laughs> just keep quiet in, in a similar way that you would when making an offer. It's the last thing you say is the price. Do you I th wait I think, for a response? I think the key here is we are trying to help somebody help us. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a classic response that you almost say, look, obviously right now you're thinking about what you're going to have for supper tonight and, 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 and therefore the classic response that you – you almost got to brush aside and say, no, no, I get that. But can I pick your brains? Is I can't think of it really. 
that is the classic response. If somebody says, I can't think of anybody, but don't worry, I'll bear you in mind. That's sort of a non-starter. That's sort of not the way you want to go with a conversation. No, no, I get all that. But can I just pick your brains right now and give you some illustrations and examples of the types of people who might be interested and just see just by a bit of conversation whether you can help me identify one or two people in your world. Okay. okay. So let's say you have identified somebody and it's close friends. How do you, how do you start the conversation with your close friends? Say they're 10, 20 year old friend, you know, friends you've had for, because they're going to go, what? what are you on about? What are you on? Sometimes. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering what context that, that is. So that person is I'll now introduced. Introdu Sally, she says, how do you start the conversation with your, with your pals contact? Oh, okay. Sally, okay. just clarify that for me, perhaps. Um, let's just go back to a different one for a moment. Um, if we haven't done any deals, how do we answer questions about amount of experience or lack of? Okay. Graphic? One of the things that you will be putting in your private finance document is your, your CPD, your experience and the courses you've attended. So uh, I always talk about the, 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 the validity of the training that you're going through. So the three day basic, for example, is 24 hours. So in the private finance document, you're validating the fact that even though you're relatively new to the market, that the learning and education you've had is significant and that you are qualified to talk about stuff. Now, in terms of if you haven't got a deal ready yet, our suggestion is you, you pick off the types of deals that you're hunting for anyway. Yeah. However, that question is based on the fact that you haven't got a deal. And my advice is have a deal first, then hunt for the money. You've got time. It takes three, it takes three months to buy a property. You've got time. Yes. Okay. Uh... Longer right now. Pardon? It takes three months to buy a property. We, we have time to angel hunt. Yeah. Um, sorry, I hadn't teed up the next question there. Uh... Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, let me just... Let me, let me just said, um, yeah, how do you? How, I guess the question is, how do you start the conversation with your closest friends? Because it is, yeah, you know, I know from experience that it is difficult, and after a while, you keep talking about it, and, and if they haven't got involved, then they're just going to go, "Oh God, he's off again." Okay, I think the answer is 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 therefore don't bore your friends to death about it. <laughs> you you are either going to have a proper one to one conversation with somebody or not, and so therefore you keep your you keep your counsel. So you, mm -hmm. you don't, you, you, you talk about how excited you are about the property stuff. You talk about how excited you are about going up north, west and for your property visits. Um, and then, and then you, you relatively give them snippets and then keep stum. So you don't do uh, semi presentations about your world and your property right. adventures uh, in the coffee queue or, or, or by the photocopy machine. That, that I think is a kiss, kiss of death. So, if somebody says, look, for heaven's sake, tell me, what, what is all this? Say, look, uh, look, now's not the time. Anyway, how's your mum? No, 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 no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look, no, look, now's not the time. Where are you going on holiday? Well, you're not going yeah. on holiday. Anyway. Um, so you push back, actually, know, until it's a case of, look, okay, look, if you're really intrigued, which, and it sounds like you are, let's go off-site, particularly office-wise, or let's go away from the Madden crowd tonight in this party. Or whatever. Let's have a coffee. And you... You actually pull them away and isolate and have a one-to-one -one conversation. And the, and the precursor to that is, look, have a flick through this before we meet. Boom. Mm -hmm. Off you go. So this is from Miro. Uh, what security should we offer to angels? And what's the most common way? Okay. Good question. The most common security offered by angels is a two, a two, well, two bits of documentation. Number one, a loan document. Uh-huh. Um, which Asset Academy provides, uh, and number two, a thing called a restriction, which is a note on title. It, the the legal documentation form is called an RX one. It's not a charge, but the investor's name is on the title deeds of the property you're investing in, or other properties. And the restriction you, it doesn't allow you to sell the property or refinance without their permission. You can do it yourself. An RX1 is a... a restriction document, which you can lodge with the land registry yourself or use initially, I would think, first off, probably use a solicitor. Okay. And um, 
This is quite a technical one, um, not entirely, but I think Aileen really wants to know this because it was one of the first questions that came in and I'm, I have been holding on to it. So Aileen, if you've been sat there going, well, he's ignored me, I didn't, honest. Um, what are the, She asked, what are the pros and cons of lending to a company versus to us, the individual? Pros and cons, I don't think, I don't think there are any. I think... So it depends on somebody's risk profile. Excuse the children enjoying themselves next door, but uh, it, means, it means they're happy. Um, we're, we're, nearly, we're nearly done now anyway. We've got about five more minutes for questions. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't think it matters. I think it depends on the angel's risk profile. So some angels quite like to lend to a limited company. Mm -hmm. and so, and some lenders prefer an individual. In terms of risk, it's the same because ultimately if somebody messes up, if you've signed a loan document, somebody has what we call recourse. They have the right to recover the money. So risk profile, Aileen, the same. So it, it, does it come down to personality type then? To yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, so typically, I think, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, it's why I'm sitting in a garden. It's my choice. Um, I hope this is not too loud for the, not too loud for the listeners. Uh, they make me happy. Um, <laughs> um, They've obviously just finished their homework. Um, <laughs> go back to the question, Simon. I lost my train of thought now. Um, it, risk oh, personality profile, style. It, it stands personality type. Yeah, it is. Um, so <laughs> you will find that a lion will uh, listen to you, uh, mm -hmm. take the information, and just go, yeah, I'm in for 20 grand. Fine, thank you. Right. Um, uh, the monkey will want probably four beers. Um, <laughs> your, your, dolf your dolphin will want to know about your family and, and want to know about your, your dog far more than the investment. Uh, and the analytical want to know um, exactly um, <clears throat> what time of day you were born. There you that, go. that detailed. Yeah. Um, mm. And and with an analytical, if you're not an analytical, don't be angry by all the questions because that is the way that they are, are connected in terms of their chemistry. And, and that's what they want to know. They want to know all the detail. Okay. Um... So I'm just shoot, looking at the questions here again. These are good questions. <clears throat> they are. Um, one is actually in the creative finance course live. People who ask questions get a great big giant chocolate, but I can't send a chocolate out to you all this evening. But have a chocolate anyway. <laughs> You'll have to give them a chocolate next time you see. You have to buy your own chocolate. So, folks, if you've asked a question and I've read it out, when you see Lindsay, just tell him a yeah, chocolate, big, big, giant chocolate chocolate coin um <laughs> so once you've secured the angel this is from john where do they send the funds to okay for instance lenders require to see where the money has come from and if 20k was deposited in, into your account once you've had secured the deal how do you yeah 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 um i'm not convinced we have time to cover all of that Today. Veering off into a slightly different aspect of it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, proof but, of deposit but, and all that. Maybe but, we could do that in the weeks to come. Next yeah, week. we could. I mean, we call that a proof of deposit angel. But the clue there is um, that if it goes through your family, a family is allowed to gift you uh, anything they want. Um, but I, I, yeah, I know we haven't because I'm, I'm looking at the time here. We, I'm yeah. afraid we don't have the, the chance. But we call it proof of deposit angeling. And we, we definitely do cover that on Creative Finance course. Um, there's a methodology for it, uh, and it's a way um, to bypass that problem from the lender. Well, yeah. Here's me going into chat show host. Well, we'd love to have you back sometime very soon, Lindsay. And we I'd love to Yes. Um, so, I'll bring uh, my neighbors. I'll bring my neighbors. That is my garden and yeah. this whole area. I was shy. I was shy. I've closed my um, my uh, bifold doors so that I'm I'm now in my sweat box of a conservatory. But anyway, well, um, yeah, see, I'm, sitting, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting the, the little um, the, the office behind me. Uh, this is my favourite place in the world because this is where Trafalgar Square Financial Planning Consultants first started years and years and years and years, and years ago, back in 2003. So it's now my daughter's art studio. But I, I, I tend to find there's a bit of resonance here spiritually. I like this area. So there we are. <laughs> well, I was going to set up in, in my similar office, as I call it, but it looks more like a shed at the moment than an office, so it wouldn't have been quite right. All right, here's one on RX1 from Glenn. He said, would you look to add this after refinancing? Yes, you would. 
So you'd have it signed to give the angel some comfort, but just explain to the angel that you are going to lodge it on phase two on refinancing. So it's probably going to be month month seven or eight. Um, and the angel will probably trust you. And, and nine times out of 10, they do trust you to, in effect, the only security they have during that first six, seven, eight months is actually a loan document. But you're seeing, you're seeing them, you're communicating with them, you're probably paying the interest monthly, giving them peace of mind. So uh, that's okay. That seems to work. Okay. And from George, once verbally securing the funds, would you recommend asking the investor to pay, for example, 5 to 10% deposit to show they're serious about it? No, I wouldn't. That's too pushy. Um, they are the investors. They are the angels. Um, what I wouldn't do is faff around for months and months and months uh, to draw down the money and therefore that's that's why you're generally hunting for an angel when you've got the deal uh, and when the person says yes probably probably get the money in uh, and you may start to pay the interest even when you haven't completed on the property yet mm -hmm. um, this might be veering into another whole subject but what Rabbit about uh, diane says what about estate agents wanting proof of funds Proof of funds is, it is another rabbit hole, I'm afraid. We do cover this on the creative finance course as well. Proof of funds, um, for those of you who don't know, you can actually obtain a proof of funds letter from, certainly from Trafalgar Square, and I believe Lemon Tree and Ascot as well, providing you've done a fact find. Uh, a broker will, will give you a PR document to say that you've got money, perhaps even if you don't. Great. Well, look, I think I've got all the questions. Um, if not, then apologies, but we'll we'll go through the whole comments section and and uh, answer back directly, or we'll post them on this thread. So if if we did miss your question, we'll we'll make sure we we, we put on there. Lindsay, thank you. Um, My pleasure. My pleasure. Absolute pleasure. People, uh, people loving our shirts. Yeah. Um, it's, we didn't make a hatchet job of the whole event, so that was good. Fascinating subject. It's fascinating science. Uh, you've got yeah. to work on it, but it's not a gift from God. No. And the next um, Creative Finance course online will be June 26th to the 28th. So if any of you want to do it for the first time or want to do a refresher, then June 26th to the 28th, get in touch with the uh, bookings team at Asset Academy to get yourself booked on that. See you then. Yeah. See you absolutely. then. And Mark Dalton wanted another mention for some reason. Um, Mark Dalton is absolutely beautiful person, even though he's over even the he's follically challenged. Yeah, I'd lend you some of mine. I'm getting there. Look. <laughs> oh, but look, I mean, uh, as Mark would say, what, 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 what? Uh, right, 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 right. Lindsay, what I'm taking away from all of this is my big learning from this is it's talk to people, um, have people. conversations with with people. I think Be enthusiastic. It's yeah, it's it's excited. All too, <laughs> excited. It's all too difficult, easy in this modern era to be texting and WhatsApping and and emailing, and it can take forever. And I feel it, it things can get misconstrued and, and diluted down. So, talking to people is 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 a big thing. That's what I'm taking away, and and that then builds the rapport, which is important in communication. Um, because yep. we, you know, I, I said this in a piece on um, on Asset Academy TV on Instagram um, on one of my, uh, <laughs> and yes, a shameless plug, um, one of my pieces a couple of weeks ago, that, that we are animals and we communicate face to face and we read one another's faces. So talking to people in person is is my big takeaway from this. this definitely, evening. definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hope I'm you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Um, see you all very soon in person i hope if Boom. not we'll see you on on here next week uh, we've got one on friday uh, we'll be doing monday wednesday and friday of course next week bye for now <laughs>